Let's go into some power raking questions here for St. Augustine Grass. This one comes from uh, Israel. And Israel says, hey, Alan, I have a question. Is it okay to power rake St. Augustine Grass? I live in Orlando. And if it is okay, when is the best time of the season to do it? Good question, Israel. So I get this one a lot. And um, again, I'm going to refer back to my channel. I just did a video last week showing a lot of really good information on St. Augustine grass. I kind of gave it a, a title that was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my St. Augustine grass? Because I have a disease in there. But I talked a lot about St. About, about Augustine growth habits in the very beginning of it. And I kind of got, I, got a, I, I feel like it was one of the videos where I've taught some of the best teaching that I've taught all year to kind of talk about the growth habit of St. Augustine grass and explain to you why it looks the way it does certain times of years. It's not always disease. Sometimes it's just the natural growth habit of the St. Augustine grass. So make sure you go to the Lawn Care Nut channel and check that out. You will see that video up there. It has some big fat grass blades with big brown spots on them. Watch that whole video. I think you'll learn something. Even if you don't have St. Augustine grass, I always say a lot of you guys are going to retire down here in Florida. And uh, we welcome you here. But please do not treat your St. Augustine grass like you treat your Kentucky bluegrass. And don't hate on it either. Man, you guys hate on that St. Aug so bad. But anyway, as far as dethatching goes, so to me, and I'll say this and I'll get a bunch of people that'll say it's not rare, but to me it's rare that St. Augustine grass needs to be dethatched. Because of the nature of its growth habit, it grows with stolons, and those stolons can creep through and break through anything. They can push through things. So it isn't like um, uh, Kentucky bluegrass that is a bunch-type grass now, it does have some rhizomes, I get it, but for the most part, a bunch-type grass or a tall fescue that's a bunch-type grass where it's just roots and, and it's roots and, and grass blades. And so if you do get a lot of thatch to settle around that, it doesn't necessarily have a way to break through it, and that can block then air, water, and nutrients from getting into the soil. It can also cause too much thatch, can also cause the grass roots to not penetrate into the soil. Rather, they will stay up in that thatch layer where all the water is, right? But with our grass, even if you have a thick thatch layer, our stolons are so thick. And if you have St. Augustine grass, go pull a stolon up. And look at how meaty those stolons are. Stolons are runners that creep across the top of the ground. And they push down roots. Well, every couple inches, they put out a node. And the node will do two things. It will push down roots. And the second thing it will do is push up grass blades. They are thick. And they are woody to a point. Those can push through thatch. So that's the first thing. So it's not going to choke the grass. Now, too much thatch can happen if you get more than about an inch or an inch and a quarter of just completely matted dead material in your St. Augustine, then yes, that can be a little bit too much. Now, I would ask why that happened first before you go and dethatch. Now, again, St. Augustine is spongy in general, especially if it's older. My St. Augustine on the one side has been there since 2005, so it's fairly spongy, but there's no thatch there. What you're feeling under your feet when you feel like it's spongy is just a lot of stolons all interwoven together but it isn't thatch but if you do think your thatch is too deep if you're digging in there and you're like man i got just this solid inch inch and a half of just dead stuff i would ask why is that happening first are you uh, not mowing frequently enough uh, i looked at a university of florida article on the uh, on the on thatch and it said that you know lawns that are, get too much nitrogen and, and over watering can get a thatch buildup. Well, in Florida, you don't control your watering from like May until September. You get rain every day. <laughs> so people always think, well, I'm watering too much. No, no, you probably can't control it if you live in Florida. It's not your fault. So always look at those things the right way. And as far as how much nitrogen is, what is too much? I mean, is there too much in one app or is it too much all during the year? There's so many different ways to look at that. I typically recommend what is considered a low nitrogen program. I like to feed mine three quarter pound of nitrogen monthly. That's not a high nitrogen program, you know, especially when you look at some of the programs that are out there where people are putting down a pound and a half, you know, every application, but they're putting a pound and a half down at once. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at that. And it's uh, something we don't want to get into right now. But the idea being, don't blame yourself. That's kind of what I'm getting at now. However, what if you have an underpowered mower that's leaving clumps. Okay, that could be contributing to thatch. What if you're not mowing often enough and the grass is getting overgrown? That can happen. So make sure you correct the problem first. Don't blame yourself if it comes to overwatering or too much nitrogen, but make sure you get that mowing correct. Make sure you have a lawnmower that's powerful enough that it's not leaving clumps. And you'll know when you look down in your grass, you'll be able to see after you mow over if, if you can see the grass clumped up there or matted across. St. Augustine will tend to mat across and and it looks like well it looks like the grass is matted there because it's cut you know you, you let it go too long 
you need to correct that issue first. Now, if you do need to dethatch, though, you don't actually dethatch. Dethatching won't work, but you can do what's called verticutting or vertical mowing. It's a similar looking machine. It's got blades that are several inches apart, and those blades kind of go down into the lawn, and they will cut through, but they will slice all the way down into the soil slightly. Now, the thing about that is you're going to cut some of your stolons, but it will also pull out enough of the thatch that it will relieve that thatch layer. Now, you're going to have to, after you do your vertical mow, you're going to have to rake all that up. And let me tell you, that is going to be the worst day of your life. If you've ever raked a lawn up north, that is not easy after, after you dethatch. Well, let me just tell you, after vertical mowing a St. Augustine lawn, going out and trying to rake that, that will be the worst day of your life. It will be 10 times harder than anything you've ever done. Every stolen that is left will grab your rake and try to pull you down and your face will fall into the, you'll bust your face on the rake a bunch of times. I'm just telling you, it's not going to be easy and it's going to be the worst day of your life. Just trust me. Now, when you do the vertical mowing, you only want to go one direction. So not north and south and east and west, for example, because you will cut too many of your stolons and the stolons are the lifelines of your lawn. Imagine if you cut your arm off, your fingers are going to die. That is basically what's going to happen. So you do not want to cut off all the stolons, but even the vertical mowing going one way, north and south only, is going to damage your lawn. So you need to do it in the late, late spring, maybe even early summer, when the lawn is actively growing. And you're going to want to make sure that your irrigation is up to par because opening the grass up like that's going to dry it out. The sun is also going to be able to shine down in there when you start removing all that thatch, which will dry out the soil quicker. But just the, the cuts, the ripping of the stolons themselves is going to allow them to dry out. Now, they'll survive. The nodes that are rooted in will survive. They will regrow. You're going to want to make sure your fertilizing plan is solid. You want to you know, keep that lawn moving. But that's what you can do. If you really do feel that your thatch is that bad and that thick, I would recommend if you are feeling that, that maybe you dig up a couple areas, take some pictures, take some samples to your local county extension service. Let them identify, is the thatch really the problem here? Or am I just looking at my spongy, thick St. Augustine grass that I just don't really know a lot about because it's so different, its, it's growth habit is so different, its look, its feel, its appeal is so different from what I'm used to when I lived up over by Michigan or Ohio or New York or wherever I lived up north, things are so different down here. Make sure that you're actually looking at a thatch problem and that you're not just looking at a thick stolen base, which is what we want. So I would make sure you look at that. One other thing I will say about thatch being a problem in St. Augustine, and this is not typically the way our St. Augustine grass grows, it can suck in enough water, even through thick thatch, that it shouldn't affect it too badly. So there you go. 